Welcome to the Mingo and Karen Show, the podcast. We're excited that you've chosen to explore the topic of life with us. All of us are here for a reason, so let's venture on this journey together. Welcome to the very first Mingo and Karen Show podcast. We are so excited, and we have been waiting on this moment for a long time. Oh, yeah, a long time coming. Yep. So um, today, um, we're excited to talk to you all about something that is, we just wanted to just stir some stuff up today. And so we're going to talk about something called the naked truth. And I know it's like, well, what does that mean? You know, it's kind of a thought-provoking kind of topic, and you don't know what it means, but we're here to tell you what it means for us. Um, And so... When we just when we were trying to figure out what topic we were gonna, uh, you know, first go thing into, to speak about. Yeah, first thing we were gonna speak about. We had so many because we talk all the time, y'all, and oh, so yeah. we had so many different um, things that we wanted to discuss. But this one, I think, is gonna lay the foundation for everything else that's to come. And so to kind of tell you where the naked truth story began for me personally, I was about twenty four years old, um, and we had just. Uh, had our twins so our oldest was three at the time and our twins were newborn and uh we, we i was going back to school to finish up my degree and i was taking an exercising class as one of my classes to get back fit and lose weight after the babies and um i started getting a headache and my headache was every day for like nine weeks straight and i knew Debil- something was wrong debilitating type headache yeah like it was really crazy it was like having a constant migraine all day long um and so i told my husband I was like babe I think I need to go and get this because I'm not one to really go to the doctor Um, but I knew that I needed to go and get to see what was going on Um, and so when I we um, set up an appointment got referred to a neurologist and then he was I was telling about my headaches so he gave me medication that would help me with the migraine but he also told me I needed to get a spinal tap oh my god that spinal tap that needle almost made me faint <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> mango done like needles so it was just like Ugh, oh my god and uh, you know of course i was in such pain i didn't care i just wanted them to fix it well little did i know that that spinal tap was going to make it worse um and there based on what he was saying there were just so many kind of like drips you're supposed to have throughout your spinal yeah. uh, throughout your spine or uh, whatever and i had a, a way more um and so he basically told me the news that i would eventually um get worse with my headaches and then i would die yeah um he said that too yeah for real. and that was hard um and i just knew i'm like no i can't so they gave me they loaded me up on all this medicine and i'm i'm not one to really take a lot of medication either but they loaded me up on all of this medicine and um it got to the point where my parents were having to come switch out uh, taking care of the kids and making sure that I was okay while Mingo was at work because I couldn't do anything. I slept all day long. Um, and so, but one day I kept praying in my sleep. It was like really crazy. I would be praying in my sleep and Mingo would have to take me like to the bathroom. He had to bathe me when he would get home. So he was like real men step up. Yeah. Yeah. And he really did. That's why I love him though. That's why we together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and so this one particular day I had been praying I had been praying and I, I could remember in my sleep state just praying and praying and praying I said I was like God you did not bring me here on this earth to be married to the person that I love my best friend and to leave my babies here for somebody else to raise I can't die like I, it can't get worse I can't die I don't believe what this man is saying she didn't so, accept the diagnosis exactly and so I decided that I wanted to get up on my own my mom was in there with the babies and I was just like Mm-mm, I gotta do this I, I wanted to go to the bathroom on my own I figured the only way I was going to get better was to push myself to get better so I got up and I didn't have on any clothes um, and so I got up and I went in the bathroom and I had my headscarf on because I was I'm really particular about my hair y'all and um, but I walked in the bathroom with no makeup on and no clothes on at all and I propped myself up against the wall and I just looked at myself because I wanted to know, I was like, who are you? What are you wanting to do with your, what, why are you here? What got you to this point? What led you to this place? Who are you beyond your blonde hair or your, you know, style? Cause you, you know, I'm supposed to be fly. Who was I? And I heard, you know, I, I, I knew that that was a moment and I heard so clearly what is the naked truth? And that was when I had to look at myself beyond my image, beyond my, you know, uh, me being a mom or a wife and figure out who I was at the time. So that's how I, you know, got to the place of uh, understanding and figuring out the naked truth. 
And for me, the naked truth was I saw Karen go through that journey and, you know, I didn't really understand it. I didn't even know she had, you know, did this by herself, propped herself up against the wall and, you know, made these discoveries as a woman. You know, I knew she didn't accept what that doctor was saying, but at the same time, I was just being a great support system, you know, just being there any way I can, all that I could do. For me, the naked truth came about a little bit differently. It came about more of I was working this job and you ever heard well you know people use that phrase the working poor mm -hmm. by no means i'm saying my salary was a poor person's salary i was being paid based upon my degree you'll never be paid be paid based upon your skill but this was my degree and this is what i had to do at this time i was in this smaller town mm -hmm. and it was like how do we end up here you know that kind of thing happened because after the real estate crash i mean you're just trying to get in where you fit in. Yeah. We were both in it 100% full-time. And, I mean, that's so many other people's stories that were full-time in real estate. So I found something in banking, and I just found myself frustrated at work every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I put on the suits, and I went to work, and I wore the nice clothes, and I put on the facade. I put the smile on my face, and I shuck and jived every day. And basically, <laughs> that's what it is. You know, I did this dance every day. Yeah. To no avail every two weeks getting this, this this salary, being unhappy with it, and always promise growth. Your title changed, but your income doesn't change. Absolutely. You know, I lived that. So this one particular day, I was getting ready to get in the shower. And the naked truth, what Karen had been through, it, it kind of like my moment showed up. So I said, okay, let's, let, let's, let's, let's uh, uh, dissect this whole situation here. So I did exactly what she says. I mean, literally, you get in a mirror by yourself, you know, probably in your bathroom or whatever, and you just you have nothing on. You have nothing that makes your image because, see, we, 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 we make images and we make things come up. We lie to ourselves. I'm not right. going to lie. We tell ourselves we're more than what we are. But the beautiful thing about that is if it's in you, all you got to do is figure out how to get it from the inside to the outside. Mm -hmm. that those people who have learned how to do that, those people are living their dreams right now. Or on pursuit of their dream. So, but before you can get to that stage, in my opinion, you have to face the naked truth. The worst person you got to face is yourself. Because yep. if you tell a lie, only you know you told that lie. Mm -hmm. If you did something great, you the first person to know you did something great. If you overcame something, whatever, you the first person to know. Right. The first person to get the report. So, I'm looking in this mirror and I'm thinking, okay, what is it? Why can't I get to that next level? What problems do I have? What What is it I'm suppressing? Is it some childhood stuff? Is it some adult stuff? Am I overwhelmed? Who can I talk to? And that was one of the most frustrating things for me because I had never met a man like me. Mm. I, I, I didn't have nobody to bounce it off of. Mm. And and I'm I'm a big, big person to believe in. I want to see it by example. It, it's very difficult sometimes to take advice from somebody who you know doing things a little bit differently than you. Yeah. Not even from a judging place, just from standing afar and say, okay, I don't really know if I could get the best advice from this person. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you find yourself, for in my case, I swept it under the rug. Mm -hmm. I didn't even do no self-help. Self I did some things, but not that real hardcore work. So it just, it just evolved into discovering who I am from head to toe, you know, and I mean literally, because the first thing you deal with is the physical aspect of yourself. What do you look like? Mm -hmm. Are you happy with your your figure? Are you, ha you know, your, your bill? Your, are you happy with what you see? Yeah. Then once you get beyond what you see, then you get into, okay, are you happy with where you are in life? Are you happy with your finances? Is, is your spiritual connection good? Is your relationship good? Are the people around you good for you? That's what the Naked Truth is about because you're going to question everything about yourself because you're going to question yourself first. Mm -hmm. So, and then from there, it helped me to move forward. You know, just like I just recently, um, somebody we know posted uh, posted this, this, this phrase or this clip and it basically said, um, you look, you listen for understanding before you need to be understood. And that really resonated with me. But I think I was able to understand that because the mere fact I knew who I, who I am and I'm okay with me. So when I'm okay with me, I can listen as long as I need to, to get an understanding of how you feel that way before I need to interject and say how I feel. Right. And yeah, I mean, I, I completely get that. And I think one of the, for me, one of the toughest things, um, was, having to when you tell yourself the truth about who you are 
you got to tell yourself, you got to discover the negative stuff too. Oh, yeah. Because that's the oh, stuff yeah. that, you know, I mean, I can say, oh, well, you know, yeah, the, here are the great things about me, but the things that need to be fixed are the hardest to face. Oh, them the ones you like, oh, no, I ain't touching that. Right. Like, mm. oh, my goodness, to know that, like, if, if I offended somebody by something, the way that I said it, my, my biggest, uh, I think one of my biggest um, challenges that I had to overcome was learning how to shut up. Yeah. Just shut the hell up sometimes. It's like, hard. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, you know, like if, if I felt compelled to give my opinion about something, who was I to offer an op- unsolicited opinion yeah. about something to someone else, you know? Um, and so I think that was one of the hardest things I had to tell myself was that ain't none of your damn business. Like back up chill out yeah and just let sometimes you got to let things throw that car be. in reverse exactly yeah, yeah. And, and and not and and to be able to um filter myself down and say uh no yeah 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 you're not gonna say that yeah um no you're not gonna do that um no you're not gonna be that and it's something that i practice constantly even today and i think it has made my life better it has made me a better person because i just don't i want to be better and I think the naked truth and that idea of it being truthful, let's just talk about that part of it, being truthful. You know, um, for me, I was one who, you know, I, I was brash and, oh, I'm going to tell you what I feel and I'm going to be honest with you, but wasn't always willing to accept that honesty for myself. Wasn't always willing to be honest with myself about what I needed to change, what I needed to do. And now because I have evolved, my life is much, much better because of it. And even, you know, when you think about the evolution of life, when I think about my 24 year old self who had little babies, I mean, we didn't even have Carrington at the time. Yeah, yeah, we did. But when I think about the evolution of who I am today. Yeah, yeah. And that that um, that honesty and that openness has now evolved into going from being brash to being, you know, um, hey, let me tell you how I overcame this to be helpful to someone else. Like those qualities that that God has put into me, you know, I, I, I still have. He knows exactly who I am, but I'm just better with it now. I'm better at what I do now because I choose to be like if I have an opinion that needs to be said or if I have an opinion about something, it's not unsolicited anymore. Well, you know, when you think about evolution, my grandmother used to say a long time ago, I've come a mighty long way. A mighty long way is, you know, that can happen in one day. It depends on how your day start off and how your day end. It could go from childhood to adulthood. Evolution is beautiful because when you go back and look at it, especially if you know yourself and you are actually evolving. Now, you're going to be frustrated with your evolution if you're the same person in high school mm-hmm. and you now the same an adult. With that same behavior, that same immaturity, you're not going to be happy with an ev- a evolution. Mm-hmm. But for me, man, you talking about a mighty long way. you talking about <laughs> the young boy with the gold tooth who couldn't commit to anything. Mm-hmm. I was always good in school, good in sports, but I was just very immature. Mm-hmm. I was a single, I was the only child, so it was about me, mm-hmm. you know. And then to meet a, a girl at 19 that demanded something from me i quite couldn't figure that out yet you know what i'm saying <laughs> so 19 to 21 but that was a lot of evolution happening right? yeah. <laughs> and it was evolution that i wasn't happy with yeah. but but when i asked karen to become my wife when i finally did it when i finally meant it per se let's put it that way uh when i finally meant it and i was serious about it a in march of next year we've been married 25 years right four kids all grown in college that's evolution mm-hmm. and learning about ourselves looking in the mirror and accepting ourselves throughout this journey because you got to understand we grew up together right you know the things she went through i went through my good days were her good days my bad days were her bad days we just share everything that's why we are so tight-knit like we are Mm -hmm. and i just believe that i believe that everybody has an evolutionary journey right i do but i i don't believe that you will get the max the Get the maximum of what you need to get out of the journey without knowing who you are on the journey. Absolutely. That's like driving without a navigation. That's just saying, I'm going to jump in the car and I'm going to go to California. And you want to go to a specific place in California from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But without a navigation or a map, you may not get the easiest route. You might get to California, but just imagine if you you had a trustworthy source to help you get there. Mm -hmm. And that's what knowing myself has done for me. Mm -hmm. And... I'm not sitting here saying that everything is always perfect because nobody's life is perfect. Money doesn't make it perfect. Health doesn't make it perfect. 
life is what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to live it. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't believe I was put on this earth to live to die. Right. I just don't believe that. I believe that I will make a mark on this life. Even if the person or the people ever tell me, I'll know it because I know me Mm -hmm. and I know that I'm going to spread as much goodness as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And I'm very truthful enough with myself to say, if somebody asks me something I don't know, I'm going to say, hey, I don't know. But I promise you, I'll get you the answer. Give me a little time. I get, and I'm going to give them a special, uh, you know, a specific time. Because, you know, you want somebody, you going through something, they're like, well, yeah, I get back with you. You're like, yeah, I won't hear from them. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that's kind of what it is. And and I also understand what Karen was saying. Sometimes you just got to learn how to shut up. Yeah. And, 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 and one difficult thing to do that we learn is that because we've been through so many different things, so many different mm-hmm. situations, we have a wealth of knowledge, we believe. That's, mm-hmm. that's what we believe. That's why we're doing this podcast. Right. We believe that. But everybody is not always ready to receive the information you Mm want to give sometimes it's not received warmly Mm -hmm. (laughs) i mean just to be honest then that's where you have to know yourself and say you know what i can't take this personal because i've been there yeah i've been there you're super sensitive about everything and somebody stepped on your toes you didn't even know you stepped on their toes and it's like whoa okay let me back up but see if you all you know, sensitive yourself, like, well, I ain't want to tell them no way. Let them go through it. I'm just trying to make it easier for them. See, that, that means you don't know yourself. Mm-hmm. You got offended because you didn't come in and be the savior. Right. And I think that, you know, being sometimes if you know that you're just the messenger. Yeah. It's easier to mm-hmm. just be able to move on. And I think that if you, you know, oh, y'all probably hear me say stuff that old folks say a lot because I did listen. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah, she <laughs> says old people stuff. I do say old people stuff. But, you know, um, they, when they would say, you know, you, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. Yeah. And so if you don't know who you were, then you can't quite sit in where you I mean if you don't know where you've been I'm sorry if you don't know where you've been how can you really sit in your presence of who you are in terms of evolution if you don't even understand you can't yourself? you can't and so it's impossible and so that's why I have had to learn that if it's something um that say for example with the with our um young people you know we don't call them our kids anymore we're trying to get out of young that adults practice. young adults um but if uh I, we're learning that you have to I, I know for me i have to navigate with them differently in terms of how i parent you know and, and mingo says all the time we're not going to over parent them we have done our job oh yeah um so there may be a circumstance that i see Ooh, he's about to run into this brick wall or um you know and i whereas before um me not understanding myself uh i would be so quick to either jump for them not to hit the brick wall or I would have to say something. So, Oh my goodness, you know, I don't want that. No, it is their lesson for them to learn. We were just mere vessels for them to get here right. in this, you know, to this place um, called earth and for them to have their own divine purpose. And so uh, me evolving and, and changing as a mom and as a person has taught me that sometimes uh, I need to get out of the way. And just let life happen. And that, and that's okay. It's okay to be able to do that. And I'm living it in real time now by applying it to how I function with our young adults. It is important for me to function with them uh, in a manner where I'm not a helicopter yep. and I'm not micromanaging. That's right. And I am, you know, I am someone for them to come back to as a resource. Yeah. Um, because it's their life. And it so uh, I it, it, think about I think about how even over the course of the last maybe four years, I've changed that about myself um, where I don't I'm not so intrusive or I'm not so um, um, opinionated about their life. Um, and I think that it's important, um, even in our relationship, we used to do this thing um, and we did it for so many years. It's so silly where. We we're not necessarily the arguing type of couple. We're not going to be doing all of that. Right. Um, But we would bicker and it'd be like little bickering. So, like, I'll give an example for me. If um, let's just say Mingo was sorting the clothes. Right. Because he cleans. I cook. We've been like that since the beginning. So say he's sorting out the clothes because he loves to wash clothes and he put um, something great in the black pile. And instead of me getting up or trying to help and say, hey, babe, let me, um, you know, I'll put 
put the gray over here with the the light blues or something like that right then i'm like dang why you had to put the why you put the um why you put that gray in there with the black clothes and my response is really you, you want to separate these right and so then it would be like this and it'd be like oh so you got an attitude and then it's like well now i'm just saying i mean it's the way you came at me well now nah, but it's the way you came back so it would be like this really immature silly thing whereas now it's like okay karen uh, you can get your ass up and you can help. Don't sit back here telling him what to do and you're not even washing clothes. Like, who who are you? Why do you get to... You don't get to just do that. And so, filtering and understanding and learning myself taught me, don't do that. If it's counterproductive and it's not going to help at all, why am I saying it? Why am I doing it? If I care and I love Mingo and I want us to live in a good space with each other, then it behooves me to know who I am so that I can at least on my end be consistent with uh, making sure that I am promoting us having a fantastic life together. And so not being able to shut my mouth, not being, you know, being not being able to, uh, you know, uh, filter myself or tell myself when to stop or to check myself um, cause for us to have uh, just unnecessary moments whereas now I'm vi- I want to I want to be very intentional about having a great relationship with my husband I want to be very intentional about how I function with him that as his partner in this relationship that I'm making sure that I am a positive contribution to his life and that I'm bringing something other than my mouth to the table. And implying this new understanding. So you got to understand if you've never heard of the naked truth before, you you don't know what it is. So now you kind of know what it is. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to apply it. And with any type of application, there comes some instruction. Mm. There, there's not just one specific hard line instruction for this. First thing you have to do is have to accept that you don't know yourself. Mm-hmm. That, that's the first phase of mm-hmm. it. If you're not willing to do that, then all of this is a waste of time. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm big on not wasting my time. Right. So that you have to be willing. That's the next thing. You have mm. to be willing. You have to accept then you have to be willing. Mm-hmm. So now you're willing. Third, you got to be ready to put in the work. Yep. So accept, willing, put in the work. Mm-hmm. So that put it in the work part. Now that part right there a little tricky. Yeah. Because it that's why I said it's not any specific hard lines. That depends on your mood each day. Mm-hmm. And if you're a person that gets set off by what happens at work, what happens mm. with your children, what happens with your car, what happens with your finances, what happens with your own self-image, that's where it's going to make it tricky. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, you can do it. Yep. We did it. Yep. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You know what? Let's look at it differently. You've already done it. Mm -hmm. You've already accept. You're willing and you're ready to put in the work. And that's why they're listening. Yeah. And for me, I wish I could have found somebody that would taking all the leg work out because Karen is the researcher of, of, of the couple. She's a researcher. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a presenter. You know, <laughs> research requires that. That's a heck of a quality because you have to sometimes filter through a lot of stuff that doesn't work for you yeah. to get to what works for you. Mm-hmm. So that's why we try to keep it short, simple, bullet point. I had a person tell me I took a speech class a long time ago in college and my instructor told us when you're speaking to a room of people, you speak on the level of the person with the least amount of intelligence mm-hmm. because that way you sure that everybody in the room gets what you're mm-hmm. saying. So if you go in there and you're using all these big, beautiful words and people are not understanding what you're saying, all they were saying, well, man, he spoke good, but I don't know half the stuff he said, <laughs> you know, and it's not. And let me say this. It's not that, uh, you know, I think the the. the even in speaking on an intelligence level, I think it's as far as, you know, wanting to make sure that you are effective in your Absolutely. communication. Absolutely. everybody to get on, it. On whatever level. Uh, you know, so, I mean, from, you know, you can be talking to a baby or playing with a baby and yep. not have an effective communication. True. Uh, same could be said for if you're speaking to President Barack Obama, you Absolutely. know. So, I, I but that spectrum of being able to do that. So, I completely agree with that. Yeah. So, as, as you navigate forward through your wonderful, beautiful life, because if you don't see that you're going to have a beautiful life, 
I can't say whether you will or will not have mm-hmm. one, but I will say the journey feels a little bit better when you believe in it. Absolutely. And believing in that, believing that the foundation of happiness in your life will begin with the truth. And begins with yourself. Yeah. Well, and the truth of, about yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know who you are, I can remember being so lost so much in my life. Yeah. And being on a constant journey of finding myself and finding myself and so I thought okay well I went to cosmetology school and you know so all these things I was doing to find out who I was on the outside because I can accomplish things yeah I mean really is that's pretty much the gist of what I was showing myself was that I could accomplish everything except finding out who I truly am and I think that that wasn't go ahead no and that's the tough part that's that tough part because as as we pursued degrees Mm -hmm. as we got married as we start having children, see, those are physical things you can see. Yep. You go to college, you get a degree. Mm-hmm. You 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 have a baby, a physical baby comes. Mm-hmm. You purchase a house, you live in it. You buy a car, you drive it. But you, you keep sweeping you under the rug. Absolutely. And then that one day, that dirt gets so d- big under that rug, that rug got a lump in it. Yeah. And back in the day, they used to beat rugs with a broom. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To get mm-hmm. that dirt out of them. They yep. had to take them outside. But why not? But now it's modern times. Why not have enough common sense to say, you know what? I don't want that dirt to pile up on that rug. Mm-hmm. Let me vacuum this at least a couple of times a week. Mm-hmm. It's preventive maintenance on your life. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that. We don't get cars and ride around to service engine lights come on. Yeah. You know, after you use so many miles, three to 5,000 miles, you change the oil. Mm-hmm. If your tires are so slick, you can see your face in them. You need <laughs> new tires. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If your car is steaming, running hot, you need to go let somebody look at mm-hmm. it. That's what happens in your life. Yeah. We wait to the check service engine light come mm. on. Girl, I'm tired. Man, I don't know what's wrong with my back. But we so scared to find out the truth. In the beginning. We are scared to find out the truth. Yes. I will always rather know before than after it hit me and it hurt. Yeah. I, that's just who I am. Yeah. And people say, well, Mingo, what makes you and Karen different? Well, the one thing that makes us different is that we're telling you about what we've already done, not what we're promising what we're going to do. Yep, we're talking about it. our resume. Yep. And I just want to say this. I, Karen told me something when I first met her, and this is what I challenge people to do. She, when I first met her, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> She said, I want to be a nurse that ride horses. That's what I wanted to be as a kid. As a kid. As a kid. As a young kid. I said, like, and then I thought about that. I was like, imagine if as an an adult, we can have that much innocence and that much no fear, Mm -hmm. no barriers and say, I want to be a nurse that ride horses. Mm -hmm. You can do that in your adult life. Yeah. You just have to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Get to the naked truth. Accept. Be willing and put in the work. Yep. And you'll be all right. Yep. And you can have, be, and accomplish anything. There are no limitations. There are no boundaries. You got this. You gonna, got it. I mean, you got it. You got it. You're going to live your most fulfilled, most beautiful life that you've ever had. Yep. Simply because you are coming, you're uh, um, coming to a reckoning with yourself to be your best self. Go and find the truth of who you are. So that you can live your most phenomenal life. And you got us too. Yep. Happy relationship. Happy relationship building. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook on our Love is Powerful Stuff page and at Mingo and Karen on Twitter and Instagram. Happy relationship building.